Good evening everyone and welcome to Friday Night Worship. Uh, it's July already. I think we are surprised every time a month comes around really. <sighs> um, yeah. So we, uh, we're going to continue with our theme of uh, Psalms and thinking of emotions. Um, and we're also going to have a Zoom meeting again. Oh yes. Afterwards, so it's always lovely to have a chat with... Uh, people that would like to join us afterwards. The information should be in the uh, writing Beginning on the text, YouTube. Things. And if we we're organised, it might be on the website as well. Hopefully. Hopefully. So, uh, <laughs> let's begin with a prayer. Yeah, man. As we begin our worship this evening, God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to begin this evening with a song. That's My good. hope is built on nothing less. Amen. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less. Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love. Face. I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone. And then afterwards, I believe you'll give us a talk. Something like that. Psalm 62 
On God alone my soul in stillness waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. How long will all of you assail me to destroy me? As you would a tottering wall or a leaning fence. They plot only to thrust me down from my place of honour. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their mouth, but in their heart they curse. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul, for in him is my hope. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In my God is my strength and my glory. God is my strong rock, in him is my refuge. Put your trust in him always, my people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. The peoples are but a breath, the whole human race a deceit. On the scales they are altogether lighter than air. Put no trust in oppression, in robbery take no empty pride, though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God spoke once, and twice I have heard the same, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. Amen. So, Psalm 62, Contentment. Once upon a time, uh, sometime back in the dim and distant past in the 1980s, I think it was, Rick Astley sang a song called You Are My One and Only. And that's nearly how the Message Bible translates the first verse of this psalm. God, the one and only. Everything I need comes from him. And in the second chorus, that is verse 6, God, the one and only, everything I hope for comes from him. He's solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul, an impregnable castle, I'm set for life. Contentment is a state of living. It's more than just a passing moment of happiness. It's different, it's more long-term, it's more deeper, it's more satisfying. Contentment is said to combine a number of attributes, satisfaction, a lack of envy, humility, discipline, and an abhorrence of greed and envy. Rob Coburn, author of Christ-Centred Contentment, says, Biblical contentment is a conviction that Christ's power, purpose and provision is sufficient for every circumstance. We are to learn how to walk through all kinds of adversity, believing in to rest on God's good promises, despite what may be going on in our lives. One of such promises, God's love for you is constant and relentless. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says this about contentment. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. 
I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. True joy and happiness is being able to be known by Jesus and to know that your salvation is in Jesus. Or, as the psalmist in this psalm puts it, in him is my hope. In God is my strength and my glory. He is my strong rock. In him is my refuge. Put your trust in him. Pour out your hearts before him. And likewise, don't put your trust in people. They are but a breath, a deceit. They are lighter than air. They will bless with their mouths, but in their hearts they curse. They will let you down. And don't put your trust in material things. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. Don't trust in oppression and take no pride in robbery. This state of being content, of having contentment, is not a new thing. But each generation seems to come up with it again and again and give it a new name, be it mindfulness or enlightenment or awareness or whatever. And I found this list on the internet of that combines a number of actions or attitudes to help us lead us towards a sense of being in contentment. To pause, to take a deep breath and accept that other people are not like you. To stop buying stuff that you don't need. Learn to evaluate what you need and what you want and ask why you're not content with what you already have and whatever you do don't make spur of the moment purchases show people that you appreciate them be present for them listen without prejudice Offer kind words and actions to build others up. Practice gratitude. Be thankful for other people, animals and objects that enrich your life. Learn to enjoy simple things that don't cost money. Having meaningful conversations reading a good book, spending time with nature and live in the moment. Look for opportunities to enjoy the small pleasures of daily life. Focus on the positives for the today, not on the failures of the past or the possibilities of the future. And remember, happiness gained from success or the material is temporary. Contentment is simply gratitude, appreciation and acceptance for the way things are right now. True contentment is a deep-seated sense, sense of accepting who you are and where you are at any given moment. So often we are focused on where we were or where we are going 
and not on the present. But remember this, God knows where you are. God knows who you are and God is with you and God loves you relentlessly. That never fails. Uh, and contentment, maybe we should have a think about how we can become more content. And I think we'll hear a bit more about contentment later in our reflection, uh, which will be after we have sung Purify My Heart. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold. Pure participation time. Fill in the blanks for me. If only I could, then I'd be happy. Let me give you an example. If only the government would lift their restrictions this summer and I could go on holiday abroad, then I'd be happy. Or, if only I looked like her, then I'd be happy. Or, if only I had that job with that... We live in a society when we're hardwired for the next thing, the next job, the next meal out, the next film, the next good thing that might be happening in our lives. And in doing so, sometimes we miss out on the here and now. Let me read you a few verses from Matthew's Gospel. This is Jesus talking. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Countercultural, isn't it? 
and a, and a tough call. And Jesus is saying to us, why are you striving? Why are you stressing? I've got this. What needs to change in our lives? Is it our circumstances where we are tonight? Or is it our perspective in those circumstances? Tonight, maybe even think about one thing, that one good thing that may have happened to you today, even if it's a tiny, tiny, small thing. And give thanks to God for what he's done today. Neuroscientists will tell us that if we practice this over and over and over, then we can actually change our neural pathways in our brain, leading to a more positive outlook in life. So we need to change our perspective, but that's not easy. It may help to find a notebook. I treated myself to a notebook because I find this tough. And I treated myself to a new notebook and every day I write down one thing that's positive, one thing that I can say thank you to God for. And then in a few months time, you could maybe review it and have a look at maybe just how much we've got to say thank you to God for. If it's our perspective that God is ultimately in control of everything and that we're held in God's hands, in any given circumstance, we'll find that one good thing. It will change our perspective and our outlook on life. So maybe tomorrow morning, it's a trip to the local corner shop to treat yourself to a nice new notebook where you can record the one good thing that's going to happen today and give thanks to God for it. And then maybe, just maybe, we might find that elusive concept of being content. Good evening. Let us take a moment to be still and calm ourselves after a busy week. Focus on the light of the candle that represents the light of Jesus and may that reflect our Christian love from our hearts to all those we come into contact. Jesus, we carry many burdens of responsibilities from our daily lives. The stresses and strains can at times seem overwhelming and we ask for your strength to lift the yoke and lighten our load. Give us fresh insight to all the emotions that have held us down and uplift us now. We ask God to help us see them through the eyes of him and may us find ourselves more sensitive to the needs of those around us too. Let us pray for all those in leadership and that take responsibility for aiding us in our jobs, through caring for our children and students, and supporting those who are vulnerable. We pray for all those involved in healthcare, for their dedication and their vocation in their selfless sense of duty. Give these people the strength to manage the roller coaster ride of emotions in dealing with the most harrowing situations. We pray a simple prayer to conclude that Lord, today is there somebody you would like us to connect to away from this church family? Please open our hearts to be receptive and show the love of Jesus that has been given to us. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And uh, I think it's time we had another song. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. I think we should ask John to play us Meekness and Majesty. Please join in. Meekness and Majesty Manhood and deity in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, and washes our feet. Thank you for that, John. It's lovely to hear from you. Um, right, well, hopefully you'll join us on Zoom and you can come and tell us how contented or not contented you are and um, what I've got right and wrong and anything else. Um, but or yeah, that'd be lovely. Just a general chat. Yeah, um, we've talked about knitting patterns and gardens and all sorts of things recently. So um, you'll just be come and join us. Do do join us. Um, Yes. Let's let's finish with a prayer. That sounds good. And a blessing, maybe. Maybe. Lord, we thank you for this time that we've had together, albeit continually online at the moment. We look forward to a time when we can all come together and actually be able to sing and worship you in church again. And a blessing. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. Amen. And let's say together the grace. The, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.
evermore. Amen. And so we have our final song this evening, uh, which would be really good, good one to sing up to. It is. Definitely. Good one. The Servant King. To bring our lives as a daily offering 